hey, it's Chris. What is it with apps? It's like, we're always looking for this one app that's gonna be the missing puzzle piece for our productivity utopia. We just can't get enough. There's an app for every situation, right? Like for me, if I can't remember I shut the garage door, I'll get an app for it that's supposed to let me know. But then I'll be out driving the next day and I'll be like, did I shut the garage door? Hmm. I'm gonna have to turn around and check it out because I already forgot. So with that in mind, here's a bunch of new apps that you can completely forget about in 24 hours, but that will definitely make you more productive. Now there comes a time in all of our lives when inevitably we have to give a presentation. I don't like public speaking. I dread getting up in front of a group. Half the problem is stick me in front of a crowd of more than four people. I just forgot everything I needed to say. The other half of the problem though is the jankety old presentation software that's been around since the beginning of computers. Well, let me introduce you to the solution. It's Gamma. With Gamma, you create presentations just like you're writing a document, so just type things out, and then Gamma transforms your content into an awesome slide deck. So it's gonna save you a bunch of time because you focus on creating rather than styling. It's 2022, and people can't figure out why they're distracted, why they can't focus. You installed social media and games? and you left notifications on? You can't focus because you just got a notification that says that pack of 20 gems for $99 is now available for purchase, and you bought it. Opal is an iPhone app, and it's a Chrome extension that monitors your work sessions, and it gives you a focus score that helps you actually seriously, really focus, right? So if you're serious about trying to focus, then you get this focus report feature that's gonna give you some clear metrics with some important context, and you'll actually be able to visualize your focus progress over time. Sticky notes. Always seem like they're gonna be helpful. Stick them up all over the place. Never look at them again. That's because there's something about the human eye that just cannot see a sticky note when it has writing on it, as soon as it's been peeled off of the tower and stuck somewhere, it disappears. You could cover a whole wall in sticky notes, you'd run into it. It's much better to use Jotify, which is like sticky notes, but reimagined. Still colorful, still simple, but now with reminders, you can't ignore them. Nobody knows what all the buttons on their keyboard does. And the older you get, the more mysterious the keyboard becomes. Like your parents will call you up and they'll say, I got all these yellow faces staring at me. And you're like, well, you calling me at work to tell me that? Well, just hit the globe key and they'll go away. And then the next day they'll call back and say, how do I get this, this nice smiley faces to pop back up? For those of you under 30, you might like Function Key Pro, which lets you do more with your function keys on the Mac. You can launch apps, you can switch apps with just a single key press. You can replace multi-key hotkeys with one simple press of a function key. This is power user type of stuff. I don't know what it is about developers. Sometimes they see an app and they say, that's a good app, I'm gonna copy it. Three and a half million apps in the App Store. There's 10 original apps floating around out there. If you like the idea of Rome research, but you crave a better interface, then you might like Thunk Notes. It's still a networked notes app where all your ideas can be connected so nothing slips through the cracks, and you can still put your daily thoughts in there, again, so nothing escapes, get them all connected up, and it's not just usable, it looks good, very clean. It's a good change. And then you got this developer who's like, I'm gonna make something new, I'm searching for an idea. Oh, I see this category has 999 people that have tried the same idea. That's perfect. I'm gonna make it an even thousand. To-do apps definitely fit in this category. At least 10 new people an hour embark on a mission to perfect the to-do app. Bento, at least, is different. It's got a fun design. It's all about helping you do less and not being overwhelmed. With Bento, you actually focus on just three things each day. There's templates, there's workflows, you got animated themes. I, of course, am a sucker, though, for AI-powered apps, like a blank screen app that literally does nothing. Not interested. But that same app, powered by AI, with $60 a month in-app purchases to change the colors of the blank screen, I'm all in. Now subscribers know I'm obsessed with Jasper because it literally writes for you. It's always been great for sales and for marketing, for writing emails, for descriptions, for social media posts, etc. But Jasper isn't just an insanely useful writing app anymore. Now it can also generate AI art and images to go alongside your copy, kind of making it like a blogger in a box. It writes, it illustrates, 
Basically, what doesn't it do? Now, here's a serious question for you. Why do you even read books? I, I mean, I know you want the information, I get that, but I mean, you can't tell me half of what you just read, right? I can't tell you either. It's like, well, how was the book that you read? It was good. Well, what did you read? I don't know. Stop forgetting what you read. That's not productive. Instead, use highlighted. You'll actually remember the important stuff. There's widgets, there's tags, there's real hope that you'll retain some of the knowledge that you run into. I love this app. So you wanna get an idea out of your head. What do you usually do? Do you reach for your phone and then you intend to open up the notes app, but before you get there, you see a notification on the lock screen that your package is shipped and all of a sudden you're checking the package details, you're tracking it, and then three hours later after you've completely doom scrolled all the way through Twitter, all the way through Instagram, you realize, oh yeah, I was supposed to write down that thing. What was it again? Yeah, that's what you actually do. But instead, you should actually create an outline using an app like Dashword, which is super unique. It's a great way to structure your thoughts, your projects, your concepts. So you get a column view, which is really cool. That's what's different. You get a classic outline view too. There's shortcuts, tags, favorites, checklists, reminders, node links. Basically, it's a whole new way to think. And when it comes to habits, you gotta think differently because habits are hard to create, they're hard to break, you're sitting there in one hand, you got a sticky note. You're trying to tell yourself, remember, don't drink coffee tomorrow. No coffee. You're gripping a grande in the other hand. You're never gonna do it. That's why the Potential app could help you do things better. It's not just a habit tracker. It actually has some unique features. It's got fallbacks, useful. It's got autocompletes, accountability, very helpful, routines, widgets, all of it is designed to help you actually get some new habits made. Now, normally around this point in the video, I would say, hey, you should check out my wallpaper packs or I'd mention my upcoming Apple Focus productivity course, which is gonna be done in the next two months or something. And I'd say, check out the links in the description, you know, get signed up. But some people get mad. They're like, what's this? He's trying to earn a living? He's talking about this? And he's gonna make some money? unsubscribe, and then they get back to making their cold sales calls and sending out cold emails, which you gotta respect. But I'm not gonna say that today. I'm not gonna advertise anything. We're just gonna move along. Research, we all hate it. The only research you like to do is researching what your old college buddies look like now. Dang, he's going out in public like that. I'm not looking too bad. You like that. Other than that, there's no joy in research, unless, that is, you're using Heyday. Heyday is an AI-powered research assistant that resurfaces content for you that you forgot about. It gives you enhanced search results. It also provides article overlays. And really, who couldn't use a knowledge base that fills its own self up? Now, I got a couple video apps for you, even though people don't know how to make videos. <laughs> I don't know who's out here telling these older folks that the best way to advertise their local business is to hop on TikTok and be dancing like that. What are you doing? I'm not gonna be able to listen to that song anymore. Well, unlike myself, if there's anybody out there who doesn't want to embarrass himself on camera, there's Synthesia. It's an AI app that'll almost sorta, kinda, not really, but maybe in an almost passable way, let you create videos from nothing but text. But if you are more the hands-on type, then Runway is an insane video editing app with magical AI tools, real-time collaboration, the ability to remove backgrounds, paint out objects, do some motion tracking, and way more. I'm pretty sure Apple needs to buy this because this is next level. Now we've got all these AI apps coming out. I'm really not sure if I feel worse for these interns that are marketing interns who might get replaced by some of these AI apps or if I feel worse for the businesses that think they're gonna replace these interns or employees with AI, <laughs> and then they see the results and their faces are stuck like. Nevertheless, meet Marketing Blocks. This is a web app that promises to churn out all your marketing assets in mere minutes. So from copy design to video to graphics, you just enter some basic information and then the AI is gonna spit out everything you apparently need in order to tell the world all about your product. So good news, you don't have to upload your cringy TikTok dance after all. Now, you're not still using Squarespace to manage your website, are you? Because Squarespace is old. like. You might as well be using GeoCities at this point. 
update. If you wanna actually update, you can check out Popsy, which is a website builder that actually works like Notion. So all you have to do here is type like you do in Notion with the slashes and everything. And then out pops a professional looking website. It's fast, it's cheap, it's half the price of the cheapest Squarespace plan. Now I got 10 more apps to share with you, but I actually ran out of bad jokes to tell, to introduce each of these. So we're just gonna do rapid fire and blaze through these. Everything's linked up down in the description so you can check it out there. Rise is for people who wanna combine a time tracker with a habit tracker to, you know, build better habits using data. But it's actually pretty powerful to be able to know ahead of time how long a certain task that you've done in the past is actually gonna take you. One of my favorite apps in the world is called My Mind, and Odin is kinda like My Mind Light. So if you're on a budget or you need a new place to stash your notes, your research, pictures, etc., and you need some decent search, powerful search, so you can actually find stuff later, then Odin is probably worth checking out. Another app I gotta mention is Look Up Pro. This is a Mac menu bar utility that you could rightly call just copy and paste on steroids. Basically, it makes it super fast and easy to search for stuff that you've already copied. You get a list of all the stuff you've copied recently, and you can just one click to search. Less friction. Synth is actually a cool app that's a browser for research. I know, research, ah. But I really like that you can tag and connect the whole web in this unique new way. And plus, it has an AI powered Omnibar, whatever that is, so. Now, if you need to write something with a group of people, then Clud should definitely be your go-to app. So you can let an editor or a client or a friend in on the action while you're writing, and for better or worse, there's Slack integration. So this could be a pretty powerful system. And then there's Delve. Delve is a really interesting app that's meant to give you a bird's eye view of the web. So it'll help you find relevant articles for things and they're clustered by topic and it actually presents itself in this interactive visualization. Very unique. Now I'm really liking the idea of Hypersonic. Now this is not technically an app, it's a to-do plugin for Notion that's built for maximum speed. So you get quick thoughts, instant notes, a sense of completion, always good, and a nice boost to your productivity. And then you should also check into Mock Oops, which is a mock-up app that really did have the guts to put oops right there in the name, but it turns your boring screen recordings into something much more exciting. And you get this nice drag and drop interface. It's actually really useful. Speaking of useful, we've got Flowductive, which describes itself as a fun, social, and a unique way to commit your time to productive activities using you guessed it, flows. So the app uses this really interesting concept of tackling decks of time blocking, which is actually pretty cool. Now, last but not least, I think an underrated productivity app is a good countdown widget, like Up Ahead. And shout out to Basic Apple Guy, who brought this to my attention. He's actually got a great review of it, so I'm gonna link that up for you down in the description. This was kind of a crazy video, so if you actually watch this far, Number one, you're a legend. Number two, you're a legend who should definitely sign up for the Daily Tech newsletter. Why do I say that? Well, the newsletter subscribers, they're living in the future. They discovered a bunch of the apps listed in this video ahead of you if you weren't subscribed already because I, that's where I put a bunch of them ahead of time. It comes out Fridays. If you like discovering apps and accessories, then you definitely wanna get signed up. You should also check out our podcast, you know, if you just wanna talk about Apple News, the most important or interesting Apple News every week, that also comes out on Friday. You can check that out down in the description. I guess you could argue that <laughs> telling you about a bunch of apps, productivity apps or otherwise, actually decreases your productivity, right? Because it just clutters up your phone and your brain space. Maybe so, I don't know. Either way, that's the video. Thanks for hanging out and I'll catch you in the next one. Later.